All right, guys, so we are officially four days away from the Baltimore Ravens heading into Kansas City, where they will play the reigning Super Bowl champions in the NFL season opener. We got Chiefs head coach Andy Reid addressing the media, talking about the challenge of playing Baltimore. We also have some big-time injury updates on both sides of the football for the both the Ravens and the Chiefs. We've also got a very encouraging statistic for the Baltimore Ravens on what Derrick Henry has done to the Chiefs throughout his career and much more Baltimore Ravens news. So welcome in to another episode of Ravens Reports. It's your guy Noah here with For the Flock. As always, bringing you all our top five news reports and storylines coming out of our Baltimore Ravens today. Let's dive into the content. we got a lot to talk about. At number one, here's what Andy Reid had to say on our Ravens heading into town to open up the season. For the challenge of playing the Ravens, good football team, uh, good players, and good coaches. John does a phenomenal job there. Along with Zach, Todd, and Chris in their, in their squads with the offense, defense, and special teams. So uh, we know they're well coached. We know they've got good players. And so we go through our preparation uh, this week. Today's the first main day of practice, and uh, we'll start it off. So. so there's a lot of mutual respect between Andy Reid and John Harbaugh, who worked together for years. And, uh, man, this is going to be a fun matchup. You know our Ravens, man. They have a bad taste left in their mouth from what happened last year, man. They, Their hopes, their dreams, what they've been working for their entire lives. Getting to a Super Bowl championship was stripped right out from underneath of them in their home stadium with several opportunities to win the game, several mistakes, and uh, a lack of execution. The Ravens fell short uh, in that AFC championship matchup, you know, a few points away from a Super Bowl appearance. So I think there's a little bit of extra juice on the side of the Ravens um, to make sure they get the job done week one. And at number two, a big part of getting the job done week one is going to involve Derrick Henry, who makes the Baltimore Ravens a different football team. It's the facts. The Ravens tried to trade for Derrick Henry for a Super Bowl run at the end, you know, before the trade deadline last year. And uh, ultimately, they had a deal in place before it was vetoed by Titans ownership. Now, I think that if we had Derrick Henry on our football team, I'd like to think that we would have had more than six running back designed runs. You know, we only ran the ball six times with running backs in the AFC Championship, despite the Chiefs being thin on the defensive line, despite the Chiefs not having a great run defense, the Ravens continue to play to the Chiefs' strength and throw the ball over and over again. You know, and the Ravens did have some success in that department. Lamar Jackson, 272 passing yards, um, a touchdown, nice long touchdown to Zay Flowers. Um, also had the turnovers. It would have been another passing touchdown to Zay Flowers if um, you know Zay Flowers didn't have that ball punched out right as he was stretching over that goal line from Legereus Sneed. So a couple things here. Legereus Sneed is not on the Chiefs anymore. Um, another thing is the Ravens have Derrick Henry. This is a completely different season. Um, it's a different game, and the Ravens are looking to start their season off strong. Derrick Henry versus the Chiefs in his career has done some insane things. Four games, okay? Out of these four games, he's averaged about 112 yards per game that he's played Kansas City. Over 100 yards a game. That's impressive. He's won three out of the four of those matchups. So he's 3-1, and one, averaging 112 yards a, a game. In those four games, he's rushed for 447 rushing yards, which comes out to an average of 5.7 yards a pop. To say Derrick Henry has run over the Chiefs would not be an exaggeration. He also has six rushing touchdowns in those four matchups, averaging over a rushing touchdown a game. He has uh, He's had the Chiefs number. In addition to catching four passes in the passing game, he's also thrown himself a passing touchdown against the Chiefs as well. If I'm the Baltimore Ravens, I'm just simply not going to play to the Chiefs' strength again, which is their uh, very comprehensive pass defense, you know, Trent McDuffie, Chris Jones as a pass rusher, George Karloftis. They got guys that can slow down opposing passers. I'm not saying don't throw the ball. I like me some matchups with, you know, the Ravens tight ends with Zay Flowers and these corners. Like, I like some of the matchups in the passing game, but let's not forget about the run. You know, instead of Chris Jones pinning his ears back and coming after Lamar Jackson against some young and inexperienced guards and Daniel Falele and Andrew Voorhees snap in and snap out, you know, how about we come downhill and pop him a few times with Patrick Ricard? How about we let him think about Derrick Henry, you know, running right through his gap? So I'm excited about what Derrick Henry's going to do, the element that he brings to the offense, um, the tight ends, the 12 personnel, 
Are we going to run it? Are we going to throw it? Last year, the Ravens were about 50-50 in their 12 personnel splits. And they were the most efficient team in EPA per play in 12 personnel. The Ravens are going to give the, the Chiefs a heavy dose of, of that and make their linebackers cover Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, make the linebackers come down and, tear, and tackle Derrick Henry, I say, at least 20 times. I'd like to see Henry with at least 20 carries in this game. Now, this isn't a complete preview. We're going to do that in a separate video. So at number three, Baltimore Ravens do make it official that they have brought Tyler Huntley back. Um, he'll be wearing number 18, I believe. He's back on the practice squad, so he's not officially on the active roster, but the Ravens announced it. Um, we talked about it uh, a few days ago, but it's now official, and the Ravens announced it themselves. At number four, um, one of the guys that's been a sleeper for the Baltimore Ravens all throughout OTAs in the offseason, um, you know, training camp and preseason, has been Tylen Wallace, who has went from a borderline roster guy. Is he going to make the team? Is he not? You know, I don't see a spot for him because of Devontae Walker and Anthony Miller, Russell Gage, um, you know, Dayton Wade, Malik Cunningham, all this competition that was brought in at the wide receiver position at the back end of the roster. You know, Tom Wallace was looking like a fringe roster guy, but all he did was show up in OTAs, training camp, and ball out and build a strong chemistry with Lamar Jackson. He's been consistently practicing, working hard. He's been available, healthy, and he's worked himself up on the Baltimore Ravens unofficial depth chart that was just released by the PR team. He's the, the wide receiver three slash four right now. And here's what John Harbaugh had to say on Tom Wallace. Because Tom Wallace had a really good training camp, a hard work on practice. He's got more opportunities in the offense this season. You envision him getting more opportunities? I do, I do. I think Tylen's going to get an opportunity, uh, opportunities everywhere, offense and special teams. Uh, he uh, he's looked good. Had a couple nice plays out there today, of course, and uh, like he does really every day. So looking forward to seeing how he does this year. So not only is he going to have a, a role in special teams this year like he did in years past, he's going to be a, a guy on offense that um, I hope turns into a consistent threat and target for Lamar Jackson because I loved the talent of Tylen Wallace coming out of college. One of his strengths is his hands, man. He's got real strong hands, um, can make those you know, outreached. Even though he's not the biggest guy, he can really extend his arms outside of his frame and make really strong hands catches. Um, and he's built... He's earned Lamar Jackson's trust and has been a consistent target for Lamar all throughout training camp. And number five, some injury updates ahead of this Kansas City matchup in a few days here. Um, Justin Reed for the Chiefs was dealing with an injury, but is back at practice, should be ready to rock and roll. Uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown, who we're very familiar with, uh, had a thousand yard season with the Ravens a few years ago. Um, he will not be playing, not be suiting up in this matchup and the Chiefs are looking to have him ready to go for week two but he will not be a factor in this game that means the Ravens are going to have to deal with electric um you know first round receiver Xavier Worthy who broke the combine record and is the fastest receiver in NFL history they're also going to have to deal with Rasheed Rice who had nearly a thousand yards as a rookie and of course the all pro tight end Travis Kelsey they also got some other underrated guys like Justin Watson. So the Chiefs are not at a lack of weapons right now for Patrick Mahomes like they were a season ago without Xavier Worthy. Kansas City has dealt with some receiver issues, you know, over the last few seasons, relying on guys like Marquez, Valdez, Scantling, and others. Uh, but they got some guys this year. They've really rebuilt that wide receiver core, and a big part of that is uh, the rookie wide receiver Xavier Worthy, who the Ravens will probably line up um, against with Nate Wiggins. You know, Nate Wiggins, one of the fastest corners, you know, right in that 4 2 8 range. We could have some rookie on rookie fun matchups there as well. Um, another update is Tyler Linderbaum was out of his non contact jersey. So he's full participant in practice, ready to rock and roll out of the non contact jersey, and should be ready to suit up against a very potent Chiefs defensive line led by Chris Jones. The only player that did not practice for the Baltimore Ravens was rookie outside linebacker, third round pick, Adisa Isaac. Speaking of the pass rusher here in Adisa Isaac, the other pass rusher for the Ravens who's going to look to um, get himself some pressures and some sacks on Patrick Mahomes is Adafe Owe, the leading outside linebacker for the Ravens. He's going to be going against a rookie left tackle in Kingsley Suomatia. And here's what Andy Reid had to say on the challenge for his rookie left. Um, um, he had a good training camp. He had good preseason, uh, but it's going to be a learning experience for him here. This is a good defensive line and um, he's going to, I'm sure there'll be some ups and downs as he goes like any young player has, but he's prepared himself and, and uh, it's time to go play now. 
All right, guys, so we're just days away. We're going to have our official preview coming out here soon. I'm fired up for this game. I hope you guys are excited as well. Uh, make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's content. If you got any value, it really does help out the channel, and I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey, when he wasn't looking, he ran me over.